What's up YouTube? It's time for review of the new Fifth Harmony self-titled record out last Friday, August 25th. Hope everyone had a great Labor Day. I hope you're all as excited as I am about the fall music release rush that is imminent. A lot of cool stuff coming our way, but, but first I want to talk about this new record from the enormous pop girl group Fifth Harmony. It's, it's a record that I had no intention of reviewing at all, but at first listen, it, it piqued my interest, and I decided to give it a shot. I really wanted to see if I could enjoy a simple, straightforward, fun pop record, assuming that it was reasonably well-written and well-performed and not obnoxious or in poor taste or overtly shallow, I guess. And this felt like the perfect opportunity because the big singles on those first two Fifth Harmony records were top 40 songs that, for the most part, I didn't mind. They may have been a bit generically produced, maybe a bit safe, but overall I liked them. That, coupled with the fact that this new record over here is just 10 lean tracks, it's a little bit over a half hour, that made it enticing. Especially since one of them I'm already very familiar with, the album opener and lead single, Down, with Gucci Mane. Down has been out for almost three months now. It's already a smash summer hit. Some people are even referring to it as one of the songs of the summer this year. I myself like it. It's a nice ode to loyalty and companionship, and the production is lively and dance-ready. It's a bit of a tropical feel to it. Decent guest verse from Gucci Mane, too, who raps about his girl staying by his side through a prison bid, which for him is very real life. So the album kicks off on a pretty positive note with that song, and as I kept listening through to the track list, this one thought kept popping into my head. And that was, if you're from the future, 30, 40 years into the future, and you want to know what pop music sounded like in 2017, this is the perfect album to listen to. Because it basically captures every stylistic trend, every prominent production technique, basically anything that defines what pop music sounds like right now is on this album. For instance, you've got Pop Drops, which is a trend that I discussed in my Zara Larson review. It kind of started with like the last Bieber album, maybe the Chainsmokers, where there's this real lightweight little EDM-ish drop at the end of a chorus and a pop song. I'll link in the description the same Billboard article that I cited in that video. Basically, an example of that on this album would be the song Make You Mad. Personally, it's not something that I'm a fan of, but it's on here. There's some trap influence production, the snare claps, the 808 hi-hats. There's some dance hall rhythms, like the best example would be the ballad Don't Say You Love Me. There's some of those pitch-shifted chipmunk vocals, like in the song Messy. Everything here, of course, is very digital sounding, like any instruments even that may be used, because there's some acoustic guitars, some clean electric guitars that pop up here and there. They sound very digital still. And the fact that this album sounds very of its time isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially when you have legitimately catchy, well-produced songs. Like Sauced Up is one that I really like. It totally succeeds as a party song. I really like the way the chorus is constructed with the call and response. I really like those super bright synths that occur in hits of two in a way that accentuates the syllables of the chorus. Sauced Up, Drunk, Love, so what? It's these synth hits that make it super big. It really punctuates things, I guess. I also enjoy how Lorne and Normani attack these quick little verses with what's basically a rap flow just delivered sung. It fits really well over what is your typical post-DJ Mustard hip-pop beat. Sure, a few of these lyrics do irk me. Not enough to ruin the song, but <laughs> enough that it's worth mentioning. I'm fluent in the bro code. Ugh. Or how about the line about, like, Forever Young Will Never Get Old. I just It's the same thing with the Chainsmokers song, Closer, where they were saying, like, we ain't never getting older or whatever. Like, I know it's just a pop lyric. I know I'm, I'm overthinking things, but this whole thing about denying the aging process is just weird to me. I don't know. Like, doesn't it make more sense to deliver a line like, we're only young once, so let's live it up? Doesn't that make a little more sense? I don't know. It just, when things bother you, you have to get off your chest, and that shit... It's got to stop. I don't understand. You're not young forever. That's the whole point. There are some lyrics on this album that bother me, and another example would be my least favorite song on the whole album, the Skrillex-produced Angel. There's lines like, I'm more brilliant than you'll ever be, or God forbid they try to get clever and they deliver a line like, track star, you're running these streets. Ugh, it just makes me cringe a bit. But the thing is, there aren't a lot of lyrics on this album like that. In general, the lyrics on this album are pretty harmless, which to me is a very big deal. Because with pop music like this, the number one thing that turns me off first is the actual words that are being uttered when they're just so mind-numbingly stupid or corny. And that's generally not the case with this album. It may be a bit of a cynical outlook on pop music, but when the lyrics aren't completely terrible and aren't distracting from the catchiness of the songs, 
that's a check in the plus column. So yeah, lyrics are passable. You've got your inevitable hot and heavy sex jam, he liked that. You got a song like Lonely Night, which is a sassy one in which the girls tell the dude in question to get his shit together and they go through a checklist of don'ts if you're gonna meet their high standards. Don't Say You Love Me is a very pretty dance hall influence ballad. It's about guys just telling them what they wanna hear and not being genuine about it. Some acoustic guitar shows up here and I think it's the best song in terms of utilizing all four of their voices. Like you really hear each individual member contribute on this song and it shows. And musically it's just a nice soft come down in the overall context of the album. As is the song Bridges, which is the obligatory anti-Trump song that closes the album. They make a, a firm, if expected, political statement against Trump and his whole building a wall thing. <laughs> the sound of this song, it just has that sound like it would be perfect for a TV montage of people doing charity work or going out and doing good in the community, doesn't it just have that sound to it? Like you arrive at your Catholic mission trip destination and before you go out and build houses or whatever, you sit in an auditorium and they play you this uplifting introduction video full of past montages of people doing what you're about to do and doing work in the, the Lord's name or whatever it is. And this is the song that soundtracks it. But hey, it's a good tune. I really like the uh, vocal layering in the final chorus. It's super climactic. And I think it would work great as a live set closer actually. You know, the house lights come up, the confetti falls down, everyone, <laughs> everyone leaves feeling super inspired and empowered and shit. There's also my absolute hands down favorite song on this album, Deliver, which has a cute ongoing lyrical metaphor about the girl delivering in the sense that she's like a package in the mail. Like there's all these allusions to overnighting and a warranty and I think even UPS is mentioned at one point. There's a lot of cute, fun sexual innuendos. But of course the reason I like Deliver is the fucking music. This song instantly floored me, especially the chorus. If I had to put my finger on one like hidden little X factor that makes this chorus really pop, it might be that just that simple quarter note piano line that hangs in the background that gives it that bounce that pulse, I guess. The verses in this song uh, take a little inspiration from Atlanta hip hop too, with that two syllable flow. Bada, 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 bada. So it's kind of cool to hear that used in a singing context instead of a rapping one. And like I kind of alluded to before, this album in general is pretty well rounded. You've got the slower tunes like Don't Say You Love Me and Bridges, also the super smooth ballad Messy, which takes Shaggy's It Wasn't Me and uses it in a completely different new context. These songs balance out the uh, more high energy, more upbeat songs. But as I mentioned already, I'm not into the song Angel. I also don't like Make You Mad. I think that pop drop in there is super lame and flaccid and just the song as a whole is very forgettable. It slows the momentum of the album around the halfway point. But other than that, this is a surprisingly solid batch of pop songs. And I guess I gotta address that this is the group's first album without their biggest star, Camila Gabello, who left the group last year. She's been busy ruining everybody's life with that awful Machine Gun Kelly song, Bad Things, that she appeared on and helped ruin. It's just that I actually, if you've noticed, I didn't even mention it in the beginning of the review, I actually don't find it that important that she left the group. Because let's face it, this is the same group, the same brand, the same team of people behind it. How different is it actually gonna be? Well, we got our answer, because this album is not hugely different in quality or sound than the two that came before it. It's not like when a band's head songwriter leaves the group and you're just like, what the fuck are they gonna do next? So it didn't even matter to me. That's why I haven't really brought it up. I'm sure Camilla has her set of fans that are like, this group is nothing without her, but to me it made no difference. Final verdict though, I really like this. I'm surprised as hell, but it is a good listen. Is it shallow sometimes? Of course. Is it gonna make you think? No, but that's not how you approach an album like this. What this album does well is take every top 40 sound, pair it with these lovely ladies singing talent, which they do have, and arrange it into a neat, tidy 10 tracks that manages to hold your attention. I actually flirted with giving this an even higher score than the one I'm about to give it, but the thing is, I'm not so sure about the staying power of this album for me, because it is so of its immediate time, it's something that I can get sick of very quickly, it's so streamlined, and it doesn't have a lot of tracks that I'm just dying to throw on my listening rotation. You know, there's just a few of them. So if you're like me and you're just giving this album a chance on a whim, try out Deliver, which is just a phenomenal song. Try out Sauced Up, which is a bit of a party tune. And then try out Don't Say You Love Me for one that's a little more mellow. And if you like what you hear, keep going. I'd say this album was worth a listen, or for me, doing this review, it was worth at least about eight or nine listens. If Harmony gets a six out of 10 from me, as always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, or shoot me a message so we can continue to talk music, and I'll see you guys soon.